Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash pro revenge where people tell us their best stories and when they got revenge on someone or something they didn't like. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video but for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some pro revenge stories. Selectively enforce the rules? Okay let's follow them to the letter now. I used to work for a manufacturing company who makes waste containers, dumpsters and such. And at first it was a good job with a good manager and no problems. I enjoyed the work. It was a dirty, physically demanding job but it kept me in good shape. I could just put in my earbuds and cruise through the day without any issues. My initial job was to prep the units for painting by polishing imperfections with a sander and grinding down the areas that were too rough, as well as cleaning them up after the welders were done with them, but after a while they kept laying off so many people and dumping their jobs on me that eventually towards the end of my time there I was quality control, helped the painter, was a warehouseman, finisher, grinder and also janitor for no additional pay beyond the small cost of living raises we got once in a while. After about a year of working for this company, prior to having all these jobs dumped on me, without any issues, new management showed up and as they likely do, they started making all kinds of changes just for the sake of making changes. Things that made jobs harder with no benefit cutting corners that should not have been cut and generally hurting productivity and workplace safety. The change in management was bad, but it was not the end of the world. It made things harder for no real reason, but all in all things were still manageable. Until I ended up off work for about a month with a collapsed lung that I still to this day believe was caused by working conditions there and lack of ventilation and PPE. When I came back to work, I was on light duty for quite some time since I had a surgery to repair the lung and prevent it from collapsing again. I went from the golden boy who they called on when stuff had to get done to the red-headed stepchild of the company and management was doing everything they could to get me to quit. They would throw my tools away, hide my stools so I couldn't use them while I was working, hassle me over things like earbuds citing safety as why I couldn't use them, even though OSHA themselves told me it was not an issue. The production manager would lie about things and write me up for non-existent violations refused to fix my bay doors that had been crashed into by forklifts numerous times that had to be closed and opened with a crowbar by two people since the track was mangled. Other things include the company giving everybody in the plant raises except for me, catching me 5 minutes before leaving work to go on my weekend and informing me that we had to work the next day and selectively enforcing safety rules and even making rules up on the fly. After about 6 months, I had had enough and decided that if they want to constantly cite policy and safety rules to mess with me then I could play that game too. I would make this manufacturing plant the safest company on the planet and ensure policy was followed to the exact letter. This was now my mission. I began to slow my work way down and only do the jobs I was hired and paid to do. Instead of doing the workload of 10 employees with nothing in return, they now got exactly one person's worth of labour out of me. Customers orders began stacking up. Deliveries were late, bad welds and welds that got missed during production were overlooked, causing the units to have to be repainted when they had to go back to the welding lines to be fixed. The warehouse became a wreck, with containers backed up to the point that people did not even have room to work. I went from completing a large unit in 30 minutes to it taking me 2.5 hours on the same one. Not to mention all the repairs that needed done that were missed during production when before I would have caught them before the units even left the production line. 
Other petty things I did included not showing on Saturday to work when the manager would catch me at the last second and tell me I had to. I took to cutting out the text in the employee handbook, citing that working unscheduled hours required management to notify you three days in advance, and leaving a letter with that portion of the handbook on his desk the following Monday. There was nothing they could do since I was following the handbook to the letter. At this point, it was a game of who would blink first. They could lay me off and I could draw unemployment on them, or I would quit. Next on the list was safety. They liked to hassle me so much about trivial things that I figured they would appreciate me going through the plan and documenting every single last OSHA violation, safety violation, and anything else that was not right. I had a notebook that was filled with violations from one end of the plant to another. Things like crane lifts that were being used improperly with J-hooks that OSHA previously warned the company about, the same J-hooks they liked to hide every time OSHA came through the plant, welders that had frayed cords around puddles of water, tools being left on top of units that could fall off and hit someone, lack of ventilation, particle counts that were way too high, forklifts that were not serviced enough, I tagged out equipment that technically shouldn't be used in its current state, and locked out the forklifts that needed brakes or any sort of maintenance. Eventually, the production manager took the bait and untagged one of the forklifts I had locked out due to having bad brakes. Anybody who knows lockout procedure can understand what a massive mess up that is. Once I compiled my list of improvements, I went to the government official who was overseeing safety and procedure since we often worked on government orders. I gave him my notebook, informed him of my manager taking the lockout of a defective forklift, then went on break and waited. About 30 minutes later, I saw my manager walking back from the head office and looking angry beyond belief. Later, I heard from someone who knows him that he got punished severely, especially for the forklift. From then on, he avoided me and wouldn't even speak to me or look at me. After that, I continued to slow my work pace down and got a bit of a satisfaction each day from the complete mess the place had become and how backed up it was every single day. After I left the company, I heard they hired five guys to do my job and that they still did a bad job at it. Had they treated me better instead of coming at me like they did, they would have still been getting the top quality of work from me that they got when I first joined them and things would have just went along just fine. I can't even imagine how much money I must have cost that company by sticking to the exact letter of the rules. Hmm, how could we fire this guy? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, let's do all these awful things that are just going to make our lives worse. Yeah, that's a good idea. Win my auction and not pay? Oh, trust me, you're going to pay. I make art as a hobby. Metal sculptures. I only sell them when I need a bit of money for something. I had a holiday coming up, so listed one here on Trade Me an auction site for a $1 reserve. The auction lasted 10 days and the piece got quite a bit of interest in that time with lots of people adding it to their watch list and bidding on it. It ended up selling for a bit over $500. Perfect. I contacted the winner with my bank details and asked for the delivery address. No reply. Email again. Nothing. I look into his profile a bit and sure enough, he doesn't follow through on half of the things he buys. Fair few grumpy feedbacks from other sellers. He's a complete time waster, or TW. Hmm, I'm a bit angry. I've already had to pay a listing fee, advertising fees, and a $40 success fee. I'll eventually get this back, but still annoying. And being in limbo on a deal sucks. You kind of expect the money and kind of don't at the same time. Got me raging. I google his email, nothing. I check if he has any listings for sale. 
he doesn't at the moment. Besides giving him bad feedback, there's not really much else I can do right now. I add him as a favourite seller. This way, next time he lists something, I'll be emailed about it, but he never does. About a year later, after I'd forgotten all about it, I get a bunch of emails from TradeMe telling me the Time Waster had new listings. Seems Time Waster is packing up shop and moving to Australia. Seems everything has got to go mate. Ironically, his listing states that everything must be picked up by the end of August as I'm moving to Australia. No time wasters. He's got listings for a car, motorcycle, tools, a welder, some furniture, rims, and a bunch of other stuff. I give his feedback another quick look to see if he's changed his ways. He hasn't. Over the following week, I research what a good price would be for everything he lists. I share all his listings with my friends and get them to add his listing to their watch list so he thinks they are popular. Instruct them to go into a bidding war with me on each item up to a certain amount but no further. I win all his auctions using a bunch of false accounts. Lucky guy gets top dollar for everything. I reply to all the auction winning email confirmations from the various accounts, arranging different pickup times for the goods, agreeing to paying cash on pickup for everything. As the week goes on, I cancel, reschedule, rain check and delay every pickup. Bearing in mind, I'm pretending to be a different person for each item from different SIM cards. On the day we'd arranged to pick up the car, it had been agreed previously that he could continue to use his car up until two days before leaving Australia, because I'm a nice guy like that. I text him that I'm on my way, see you at one. I was late of course. Nearly there mate, see you soon, half an hour later. Five minutes away, twenty minutes later. I'm here, where are you? Ignored the text messages and waited for the call. Where are you? Annoying, isn't it? What? Annoying, isn't it? What do you mean? You know, having someone bid on your auction with no intention of buying it. Are you kidding? No, I remember being quite annoyed when you did it to me. Who? When? I'll let you figure that one out. Click. Over the next few hours, I called him as the welder buyer. Annoying, isn't it? The motorbike buyer. Annoying, isn't it? Outdoor furniture buyer. Annoying, isn't it? All of them. To top it off, I gave him positive feedback on everything I bought, saying he was a top trader, A++++, easy pickup, good communication. In the coming weeks, I was contacted by TradeMe regarding his dispute. He was wanting to get the success fees back, over $500 altogether I guess. I responded to each of those with the fact that I had already paid and picked it up and was happy with the item. Not sure if he got all those success fees back, but I very much doubt it. <laughs> I've never heard of Trade Me, but I think it's like eBay and people do that all the time on eBay. Just bid random things and then just don't actually pay. It's so stupid. Oh, I just want to quickly say, if you like the I Don't Work Here Lady stories and the Entitled Parent stories and all the other boards, then go check out Storytime 2. It's my second channel, it'll be at the top of the description and everything. But yeah, it's basically all the other boards apart from Pro Revenge and Malicious Compliance. So if you like everything else, then go check that one out. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.